Good evening. As we continue this evening looking at the last days of Jesus' life, um, and as we continue to approach Easter, uh, we'll be looking this evening at a passage in the book of John. Uh, we'll be reading from John 14, verse 15. Um, and you can turn this along. Um, and yeah, this passage is a small portion of what is known as the farewell discourse. So it's the, some of the last few things that Jesus encourages his disciples with before he goes to the cross. And so we'll read from John chapter 14, verse 15 to 25. Jesus says to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I've spoken to you while I'm still with you. Just so far. And so, in this passage, Jesus is encouraging his disciples that even though he is going back to the Father, um, God's presence will continue to be with them. And so, in the few minutes that we have left, um, I just want to look at two aspects of this passage. Um, firstly, um, who do all these things apply to? Well, um, it's obvious that Jesus in this passage is speaking to his 11 disciples. And if you read the passage just preceding this, well, if you read a little bit further back, you'll see that Jesus yeah, he's speaking to his 11 disciples after Judas had left the table. And so these things apply to disciples of Jesus. Um, and so if you look at verse 15, and a few times you'll see he repeats himself here that, um, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Uh, so that's verse 15. And then in verse 21, we also see whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me, and he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And then again in verse 23, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. And verse 24, he says it's kind of in reverse, whoever does not love me does not keep my word. And so this passage, um, these things Jesus speaks to his disciples, to those who love him. Um, and, and we see that the evidence of whether we love Jesus or not is whether we keep his commands. And as you'll know, especially in the book of John, uh, the foremost command that Jesus leaves his disciples with is, he says, a new commandment I give to you, that 
to love one another as I have loved you. Um, and so we know Jesus' commands are to love our neighbor and to love God himself above all things. And if we do that, we demonstrate that we indeed love Jesus. And so we see all these things are they apply to not just the 11 disciples, but to all who love God. Um, and again, we see in verse 20 what Jesus says, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And verse 23, if anyone loves me, um, he will keep my word and my Father will love him. And so the second aspect I want to just look at is Jesus says, well, was the, to answer the question, what is it that, um, that is promised in these passages? And I think we can all put it under the heading that Jesus promises that God will be present with us even after he goes to the cross and ascends to the Father. God will continue with us. And so we see that um, that Jesus speaks about this in um, terms of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's the triune God that will continue with us. So we see first Jesus speaking about the Holy Spirit in verse 16. He says, And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another help to be with you forever. Um, you see, Jesus had been there, the helper, or the word can also be translated as advocate or counselor or comforter. And Jesus had been that for the disciples. Um, but here he says that after he's gone, he will send another counselor. And we know quite clearly who that counselor is because he says in verse 17 even the spirit of truth the holy spirit whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him but jesus says you know him for he dwells with you and we see a, a bit of a difference in the way that god relates to us before and after the cross in that after jesus goes to the cross in the sense Jesus says that he dwells with you now, but afterwards he will be in you. Um, and so we see firstly that Jesus said, promises to send the Holy Spirit. Um, but secondly, Jesus also says that he himself will be with his people. And so if you look at verse 18, Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. And then lastly, Jesus also tells us that the Father himself will be present with us. And so we see that in verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. And so we see Jesus promises to us, his disciples, he promises us that God will be with us who love him. Not only that, but we are assured of God's love for us. Read again, verse 23. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Um, and verse 21, well, Jesus also said, He who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him myself to him. 
And so in this time when we are all separated physically from one another, and even though we have these helps like um, live video chat or live video, um, at the same time we are we are separated from each other physically. But what Jesus promises to us is that God's presence continues with us. And that is made possible. Um, there's, there's some new relationship after the cross that the Holy Spirit does not just go with his people, but in, in fact is in his people. And the Father and the Son make their home with us. So we can be encouraged to know that even though we ourselves are separated from each other, um, God remains with us. And he is working in us and, and we can rejoice at his presence with us. Um, let us just pray. Father God, we thank you that you have not left us as orphans. As Jesus says, um, you will be with us and make your home with us. Lord, as we might feel distant and lonely because we aren't able to see our brothers and sisters in Christ as, as we could before the lockdown, Lord, we are thankful to have you with us. Lord, all the more we look forward to the day when we will see you face to face um, in the new creation. Um, continue to encourage us and, and give us joy because of this fact that we know that you love us who are your people. In Jesus' name.